JFT, just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFD's weekly market outlook webinar for the week April the 6th until April the 10th. I am Haralambos Pissuros, senior market analyst here at JFD, and I will describe the most important economic releases and events on the financial agenda for the week ahead. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer first. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest, and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, for another week, market participants are likely to keep more, more, most of their attention locked on uh, numbers and headlines surrounding the coronavirus uh, uh, spreading around the globe. Uh, with regards to central banks, we have only one deciding on interest rates this week, and this is the RPA. As for the data, for the another week, the most important release may be the initial jobless claims for the week ended on April 3rd. We also get the US CPIs for March, which come out on uh, on Friday. So let's start with uh, Monday. Monday appears to be a relatively light day in terms of, of economic data and releases. China, Chinese markets uh, were closed due to the Qingming Festival, while the only release worth, worth mentioning is the UK construction PMI for, uh, for March. The forecast suggests a slide into contractionary territory, into contractionary territory to 44 from 52.6, which due to the effects of the coronavirus outbreak uh, to the global economy appears more than normal to us. After all, both the UK manufacturing and services indices for the month slid into contractionary territory as well, with the latter recording its uh, fastest decline since uh, the survey's inception. Now, speaking about the virus, for, a, for another week, investors are likely to pay more attention on uh, numbers and headlines concerning that front. Over the weekend, uh, the numbers of new infected cases and deaths have uh, slowed, and it remains to be seen whether the slowdown will continue in the days to come. You can see the graph here. It's uh, the change in new cases and deaths on a day-by-day -day basis. And you can see that over the weekend, uh, we had less and less um, uh, cases and deaths uh, uh, on a day-by-day -day basis. Now, uh, the slowdown allowed some Asian markets to trade in the green uh, today, suggesting that if we continue getting less and less cases day-by-day, -day, equity markets may set the stage for a decent recovery. That said, another round of record numbers, if we get another round of uh, record numbers, uh, this may be enough to turn things upside down again. This would mean that the worst is not behind us yet and that the economic wounds could still deepen and drag uh, longer than previously anticipated. Now on Tuesday, on Tuesday we have a central bank deciding on interest rates and this is the RBA. At uh, an out of schedule meeting on March uh, 18th, the bank cut interest rates to a new all time low of 0.25% and announced it will start QE purchases for the first time in its history. That said, the minutes of this ad hoc uh, meeting showed that although all members supported the proposed policy change, they also agreed that the cash rate uh, reached its effective lower bound, which suggests that a cut, rate cut to zero may be off, uh, off the table, at least, uh, at least for now. Thus, even uh, if the ASX 30-day interbank cash rate futures implied the yield curve, which I have, the graph of which I have here, suggests a 42% chance for another rate cut, I, I do, we don't uh, think that uh, Australian policymakers will touch uh, interest rates at uh, this meeting. They could just expand their QE purchases or they may prefer to wait for a bit longer before making any new adjustments uh, in policy. After all, 
It's only been three weeks since their latest action. Now, as uh, for Tuesday's data, during the Asia morning, we have Japan's household spending and Australia's trade balance for February. Japan's household spending is forecast to have slid 0.2% uh, month over month after tumbling 1.6% in January, while no forecast is currently available for Australia's uh, trade balance. Later in the day, we get the US uh, jolts job openings for February, which are expected to have declined somewhat to, to 6.476 million from 6.963 million. Now, following the skyrocketing of the initial jobless claims for the week ended on March uh, the 27th, uh, to a new record of 6.65 million, investors may treat February's job openings as outdated and wait for the March number. As uh, during March, the virus damages had been uh, much uh, more severe. From Canada, we get the IB PMI for March, but there is no forecast uh, available at the time uh, at, at, at this time. Now on Wednesday. On Wednesday, although the Norwegian, uh, the Norwegian stock market will be closed, we get the nation's CPIs for March. Both the headline and core CPIs are expected to have held steady at 0.9% year over year and 2.1%, which is unlikely to alter Norwegian policymakers' uh, view around monetary policy. On, um, on March the 19th, at an extraordinary meeting, the Norwegian Bank decided to reduce its policy rate to 0.25%, and noted that the committee does not rule out further reductions. Norway's economy depends largely on oil exports, on oil exports and if the lockdowns and restrictive uh, measures around the globe continue to hurt demand uh, for the black gold, officials may not hesitate to bring interest rates down to zero at their next ordinary meeting, which is scheduled for uh, May 6 and, and 7. After all, the effects of low oil prices are clearly visible on consumer prices. Although the core rate uh, stands a tick above the Norges Bank inflation target, the headline one, which includes uh, prices of energy items, is, uh, much, uh, is much lower. Now, later, uh, later in the day, uh, the FOMC releases the minutes of their second extraordinary meeting, we, uh, which was held on March uh, the 15th. This is when officials decided to reduce the federal funds target range by 100 basis points to the uh, zero uh, to the zero to zero 25 percent range. Having said that, we expect the ministers to pass unnoticed, as investors may treat them as outdated. Since then, uh, the Fed already proceeded with additional measures in order to ease the economic damages from the fast spreading of the coronavirus. While on March the 26th, the Fed Chair uh, Jerome Powell said that the Fed still has room for more policy action and that they are not going to run out of ammunition. We believe that market participants may stay on guard for Thursday's initial jobless claims for the week ended on April uh, 3rd. Now, as for other uh, data releases on Wednesday, during the Asian trading, Japan's current account balance for February is coming out, while uh, later in the day, Canada releases its housing starts and building permits for March and February, respectively. Japan's trade surplus is expected to have increased to uh, 3.062 trillion yen from uh, 0.612 uh, trillion. Now, no forecast is available for Canada's uh, building permits, while housing starts are expected to have declined to 165,000 in March from uh, 210,000 in February. Now on Thursday, on Thursday, the spotlight is likely to fall on the initial jobless claims for the week ended on April the 3rd. Last week, uh, initial claims uh, more than doubled the previous record of 3.3 million, hitting a new one at 6.65 million. Now the forecast points to another 5 million claims, but bearing in mind that the virus situation in the US is worsening day by day, we wouldn't, we wouldn't be surprised if we get uh, a new record. This would confirm that the damages in the job market are worse than previously anticipated and may trigger another round of uh, risk aversion, meaning lower equities and higher safe havens. 
The preliminary University of Michigan Consumer Sentiment Index uh, for April may also attract uh, special attention as it may reveal how much consumers' uh, morale has been impacted by the outbreak of uh, the virus. Expectations are for a slight 29.1 for, uh, 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 expectations, excuse me, are for a slide from 89.1 to 75, which will be the lowest since April 2013 and may add more fuel to investors' uh, flight to safety. Now, uh, in Canada, focus will be on the nation's employment uh, data for uh, March. Expectations are for the unemployment rate to have surged to 7% from 5.6%, uh, while the net change in employment is forecast to show that the economy has lost 350,000 jobs after gaining uh, 30.3 thousands. This would be the worst print in Canada's history, at least since we can find data from, and may raise speculation for more stimulus by the Bank of Canada. On, uh, on March the 27th, the Bank decided to, to slash, uh, the Bank of Canada decided to slash interest rates to 0.25% and to launch a QE program in order to safeguard its economy from the, from the effects of the coronavirus uh, spreading. The Governing Council highlighted its readiness to take further action to support the economy and the financial system if needed, but similarly with the RBA they noted that the policy rate is now to its effective lower bound, which means that they are not willing to cut interest rates further. Maybe they will decide to expand their quantitative easing program if the spreading of the virus uh, threatens uh, even more the outlook of, uh, of the Canadian economy. Now, having said all that though, even if the Canadian dollar slides on potentially disappointing employment data, its broader direction may depend primarily on movements in, uh, in oil prices. As Canada is among the world's biggest oil producing and exporting nations, Last week, both Brent and WTI skyrocketed on speculation that Saudi Arabia and Russia may eventually agree on new production cuts to stabilize the energy market, and thus it remains to be seen whether this will be the case, and if so, whether the new cuts will be enough to offset the tumble in global demand due to the pandemic outbreak. Now, according to media reports, an OPEC Plus meeting could take place this Wednesday and Thursday. So it would be important to see whether we will get a new, a new production cut and whether this will be enough. Uh, you can see I have a, a graph here which shows the correlation between uh, dollar cut and WTI. I have the WTI inverted. You can see that there is a very decent correlation on minus 0 0.97. Uh, this means that if, uh, if oil prices gain due to potentially uh, additional cuts. This could help the Canadian dollar gain as well, which means USD cut could come under selling interest. On the other hand, if the measures, uh, if the meeting, the OPEC meeting disappoints, this could push WTI or and WTI and bread lower, which means that uh, USD cut could uh, gain. Now, as for the rest of uh, Thursday's data, in the UK we have the monthly GDP, the industrial and manufacturing production, and the trade balance all for the month of uh, February. No forecast is available for the GDP rate, while uh, both industrial and manufacturing productions are expected to have uh, grown 0.2% month over month from minus 0.1% and plus 0.2% respectively. The nation's trade deficit is expected to have widened to £6 billion from £3.72 billion. Now, in any case, we believe that uh, pound traders will prefer to pay more attention to data referring to the month of March, during, during which the coronavirus probably left more marks on the UK economy. The ECB minutes and the US PPIs for March are due to be released as well, but bearing in mind that the ECB has already proceeded with more measures after uh, its, um, its latest ordinary meeting, and that investors may prefer to focus on the initial jobless claims with regards to the US data, we expect both of these releases to pass largely unnoticed. Now, on Friday, on Friday, uh, 
It is Good Friday in most nations under our radar and thus the respective markets uh, will be closed. With regards to the data, we only get the China CPI and PPI for March and the US CPI is for the same month. China's uh, CPI is expected to have slowed to 4.9% year over year from 5.2, while the PPI rate is anticipated to have entered the negative waters. Specifically, it is expected it is expected to have slid to minus 0.1% year over year from uh, plus 0.8% in February. Now, as for the US inflation numbers for March, the headline rate is expected to have fallen to 1.6% year over year from 2.3%, while the core rate is anticipated to have ticked down to 2.3% from 2.4%. The case for the headline rate to fall more than the Core one is supported by the year over year change in WTI, which uh, slid further into the negative territory. You can see it here. Uh, the, the black dotted line is the year over year change in WTI, which follows the spread of the headline and the, and the core CPI rates. And this is because the difference uh, between the headline and the core CPIs is uh, volatile items like uh, energy. So if um, if the core rate is to tick down to 2.3 from 2 uh, from 2.4 this means that the headline rate is likely to fall uh, much more than the core uh, that the core one now following the disappointing nfps uh, last week and potentially another extreme huge increase in initial jobless claims uh, for last week slowing inflation may add to speculation for more action by the fomc that said, with the comedy bringing the rates to the 0 to 0.25% range and announcing unlimited amounts of QE purchases, the big question is, what other measures can the Fed uh, adopt? Will they opt for negative interest rates? The Fed has never been in favor of the negative rates regime, but it remains to be seen whether the coronavirus outbreak will force them to make an exception. Now, according to the yields of the Fed Fund Futures, the graph of which I have here, investors do not anticipate something like, something like that at the moment. You can see that all yields are positive, and which means that investors uh, do not expect uh, the Fed to cut rates into, uh, into the negative uh, territory. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. Um, if you have any questions, you can uh, submit them now. Do we have any questions with regards to the weekly outlook? We don't have any questions, so thank you very much for watching and, uh, and listening. If you are interested in more detailed and frequent analysis, you can find me on our YouTube channel from Tuesday to Friday at around uh, 7.30 a.m. GMT time, uh, where I describe uh, uh, the market on a daily basis, uh, the main events of the day, what happened the previous day, and uh, there is more detail uh, in those videos. So goodbye. I hope you have a great week and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again uh, next uh, Monday. JFT, just fair and direct.